welcome welcome to home it looks like this i'm liz and i'm a mum of four today is about being a disabled parent and also being a home educator there's not actually very many vlogs or blogs out there on the topic that i've been able to find um and i was sat here today and i'm actually having one of my rest days today um anthony is at his stepmoms and then ways with her dad in Chorley. So I have Sundays to myself <laughs> and I tend to set that aside for resting and uni work, any recuperation I need and just basically letting my body do its thing, catch up with where it needs to be. Now I know a lot of disabled people would actually love to home educate because so many approach me about the topic privately. As soon as they find out that I'm a disabled home educator, I get an influx of questions on the topic. So I decided that I would do a little blog on it today. So to provide some background, I am actually a disabled mum. I have a multitude of medical conditions from Addison's disease, which means I'm steroid dependent. A simple way to explain that is that I have to take steroids every day to keep me alive. Yeah, and without the steroids, I wouldn't be able to survive. In addition to that, I have ehlers syndrome, known as EDS, and I've got type 3. POT, which is postural orthostatic tachycardia. Try saying that when you're drunk. <laughs> Mast cell disease, fibro, and a few other little things. Even there, they seem to collect them. And some days it can be hard to know which conditions are actually causing which symptom, because there's so much crossover as well. So this is a blog aimed at any of the home educators who are disabled or any disabled parents who are considering home education. And by disabled, I mean chronic illness, disability, or even a mental health condition as well. Any condition that really affects your day-to-day -day life. And the first thing I'm going to say to everybody is to be honest with yourself. Know your body and pace yourself. We've all heard of the spoon theory. And I incorporate that in my life by equating each spoon to a certain amount of cortisol that could be used within a day. And in that way, I know that I'm effectively pacing myself. When you're setting up, try and have things ready in advance so that they're accessible. Especially if you're doing physical activities with the children, like you've set up an experiment. You need everything within reach and distance so you're not having to travel too far to get it or having to try and dig it out because that all expends energy that you need to dedicate to the children. Being disabled doesn't mean you can't home educate because you can have quite a flexible lifestyle but you do have to take into consideration what will work for your health because everyone is different. Home ed is very flexible and on good days we can hit the ground running and on bad days we'll slow things down, wind things back and we'll learn through documentaries and activities that will, they will happily get absorbed in for hours that don't need much parental input. My next tip is to use the resources that are available. I love OutSchool and the £2 Tuition Hub because they're a great tool for when my health gets the better of me. My children are still taking part in online classes. They're still learning. They're still covering topics that they're enjoying. It's still in a safe, comfortable environment conducive to learning but I get to sit in the background and I'm very rarely needed during them sessions. The only time my presence is truly needed is say they're doing an online experiment or they're doing an online craft and I may need to just give a little bit of input and guidance for um, Nimue, my youngest child. And you'll actually be surprised at how many disabled home educators there are. There's actually quite a few in my local vicinity. So I advise that you make connections Make yourself that network of people who truly understand where you're coming from. These people will be your lifeline on your bad days. They'll be the ones who will pick you up and remind you that anything is possible. And these people can be a huge, huge support for you. Because they've been there themselves. They too have bad days. They too have good days. And they'll have in-between days where they're not quite sure what they're feeling. <laughs> Home education is very flexible and learning happens all the time. There's no need for strict schedules. And so it is actually very feasible to work around any rough days you may be having. And there are plenty of ways to facilitate your child's education without putting further strain on yourself. If you're feeling up to it, game schooling is great and it can be a huge distraction from the pain too. There are lots of simple yet educational games that you can incorporate on days where you're feeling run down. And if you've got more than one child, you can get them to play with each other while you observe. 
There's also documentaries, including docudramas, scrapbooking, learning through art, simple art activities. Especially if your child's at an age where they can be left alone to do some activities like that. And obviously the online classes and courses that I briefly mentioned earlier. Another tip is to plan ahead and allow for rest days. I always allow for a gentle, relaxing, unschooling day following anything majorly stressful to the body. So for example, if we spend an afternoon outdoors or if we go to the museum for the day or if we do somewhere like Eureka, then I know that next day I'm going to need to plan for some home activities that keep the children occupied whilst also allowing me to be resting and allow my body to recuperate. And this can even include meal times. You can plan and prep your meals in advance for them days. I know some of our home educators will use the slow cooker, so they'll set it up in the morning before they go in on the trip. They've got it for when they get back and then they do the same for the next day or they'll batch cook the weekend before. The beauty of home ed is that not only can you work around your children's health needs, but you can also work around your own. It's also important to know your body. I know for a fact that it's going to take a while in the morning for my cortisol to pick up enough for me to be able to get out there and do anything. So I plan for that into my day. I know I'm going to need that time of the morning just to get my cortisol levels up to a more recommended amount for a human being to have. Luckily that also suits my son because of his PDA. He also needs that time of the morning to wake up and come away of his surroundings and actually start to feel part of the day. <laughs> However, we're always doing something educational and sometimes we'll even keep going well into tea time. Um, I didn't actually home educate until I was disabled. I was working as a teacher and I had my own businesses and then I became very, very ill where I was bedbound for three years. I couldn't even tolerate somebody helping put a pair of socks on me. The pain was that severe during that time span. I couldn't hug my children. It was a very traumatic experience to be honest and, and it totally made me reevaluate every aspect of my life. Up until then, I'd pretty much been a workaholic and reflecting back now, I can see now how much time I'd missed out with my older ones when they were such a young age. What actually made me look into home ed was, was the experiences that one of my child was having at school. They were in year seven and a very dangerous incident occurred that we were lucky he was okay. So I immediately deregistered him and pulled him out. And I took that leap of faith. And then after seeing how much he had thrived, I um, <laughs> decided to pull all the others out too. <laughs> I mean, Nimue's no never been to school because at the age of her, I was already home educating by then. And Anthony only did, I think it was reception, year one, um, a little bit of year two. Whereas Tyler and William got up into senior school years. And I'm gonna be honest, it's not always easy navigating your health conditions. But for me, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done. At the end of the day, the one thing to remind yourself is that you're already parent with your condition. And home ed is actually quite a natural extension of parenting because you're just facilitating the education. No one's expecting you to be a nine to three teacher. You are facilitating their education and learning can happen anywhere, anytime. So get the image of the demands of teaching in a school out of your head and how that would impact your physical health and make it deteriorate further because being a home educator is a completely different setup to that. A lot of the time on my rough days I won't even get out of my pyjamas <laughs> but my children are still receiving a bespoke well-rounded education. You already adapt to working around your health conditions to meet your child's needs. You do it every day anyway. It's instinctive and you've already got yourself into that routine. You know what works in respect to your health and your family, and that is very easy to translate over into a home education journey. And so it's important to remember that the basic foundation of home education is to foster a lifelong love of learning. And anyone can do that. That's about connection more than anything else. And making sure that they have access to what they need to enjoy and absorb their learning. Another thing I'd like to point out is that the home education community is very disability friendly. There's many children who have disabilities themselves. So we always try to make sure that all the events and workshops where possible are disability friendly and accessible. 
and most events will actually state on them that they are and many of them also allow free care spaces too so, so it's always worth checking with the event organizer because you should be able to take along your carer with you and there shouldn't be any issue with that at every event i go to i always make sure i can have a second adult with me and it's either my mum or my children's dad because they know my health conditions inside and out they know if i'm going to have an issue they know how to give me my emergency injections they know where all my medications are they know what to tell the ambulance so i always have them with me and touch wood that's never happened so far it's never been needed but i've always been able to have someone there with me as a support for myself so you'll have to see either of them quite a few times in a lot of my TikTok videos as a result because they're always having to be there in the background and take it in turns and we work it around everyone's schedules to make sure that I can always have a second adult there that the children are comfortable with and who understand my medical conditions. If you need medication then obviously like I mentioned before I take mine with me it's just about keeping it somewhere secure and never away from yourself so no other children can get access to that medication. You have to follow the same protocols that you would do out and about anywhere in public really where you have to take your medication it's no different at the end of the day any disabled parent already motivates their child you motivate them all the time you encourage them all the time and you facilitate their learning all the time probably without even realizing that you're actually doing it and home education as a disabled parent doesn't have to be any different at all to that it's about finding what works for your family and what works for your health conditions overall, your entire family's health picture. Because obviously your children will have their own needs, like, like Anthony has autism. So it's just about finding what works for you and getting that balance right in your home and your day-to-day -day educational journey together. However, the biggest thing I've got to emphasise on is making sure you have time to rest. That is crucial. Because you can't fill from an empty cup. Like today, today. Like today, Sunday, is my day where I rest, I get time to focus on my needs, my educational needs, because I'm attending university again at the minute. And I also get to have that time to just sit and be and not have to meet anybody else's demands. I can just listen to my body and I can allow my body to rest and heal, ready for a supercharged Monday morning. <laughs> there will always be the odd overwhelming day. It's not always sunshines and rainbows, it never is. This is the real world, it's real life. So there will always be that odd day where you feel overwhelmed, but that's no different to when your child attends school. There will always be days where that is overwhelming too and feels physically challenging. But on those days, it's important to remember to take a deep breath, throw that day out the window and just go with the flow. Listen to your body, meet your body's needs and demands and just go with the flow. I always have a basket ready and actually I might show you that in a minute I'll go get it and inside that basket are activities that the children can also help themselves to so if I'm having an extra bit of a sluggish morning they can run over go to that basket and they can get cracking with different activities that appeal to them so I will I'll go get that basket in a minute and I will show you it and again my instructions on that just slowing things down if things get overwhelming and going with the flow goes out to all home educating parents not just disabled ones too being disabled does not stop you being great parents so nor will it stop you from being great home educators thank you for watching right i'll go grab that basket now so this is the basket and as you can see it's used very regularly and it isn't in the neatest or tidiest condition because when they went to wherever they went with the dads today because obviously they went to different places um i just <laughs> swept all the stationery off the table back into the front of the basket because i needed the space for my uni work <laughs> so i'll just quickly go through some of the contents with you and show them there's a raw doll book because obviously we're doing reading literacy skills with anthony and he's doing a lot of comprehension and there's lots of resources out there that cover all of these books. Um, we're doing James and the Giant Peach. So yeah, he's working through that currently. So he's able to go into that basket and take that out and read another chapter anytime he chooses. We have these, which they're working through. And they have their own copies of these. And it's very rare that we do workbooks and that. But he knows that he can go in and he can take this out and he can do a couple of pages from it whenever he wants to. 
covering Africa at the minute. So we've also got this one in here. And that just means you can get familiar with some of the big cats that were part of his recent unit study. Nimue has this one in. And I actually love these. I'll show you this actually. These are fantastic little resources. And I'm pretty sure we got these from Aldi. If I remember right, I'm sure I got these from Aldi. So it starts off with the story here. And it focuses on a certain sound on each word on each page and then they have to go through and they can find all the different items in that page and it just reinforces them sounds in different words as they're saying them and also what they look like in the written form they'll gradually pick up on yeah these are great absolutely love these and then we just get these out and she can crack on with them she loves doing them um let's see these are just different projects that they've got on the go that they can take out and continue on and they've got reading diaries i've also got these which are just their funky little activity books and each one has a different activity in so it's all growth mindset activities as well so it's really good at reinforcing a positive attitude towards learning and development and growing yourself as a person. So they're very motivational, but they've got tons of activities in, as you can see. I will try and hold that up for you now. I'll probably have to flip it so you can read them. But each one is slightly different. They got them in there too. And we're doing work on the cells, so we've got that in there at the minute. And then just like craft stickers, bits of paper that they can help themselves to and play with. And Nimway has the Alpha Blocks magazine so she can work through. And also some phonics books too. Yeah. Oh, and a storybook for Nimue as well. She's got the two fairies at the minute. <laughs> and then they have access to all the colouring pens in here too. Paint brushes. Stationery. Yeah, I think I've showed you everything in there now. And that basket was actually my nan's. Um, and when she passed away, I was given it. And for ages, it sat there empty. And I couldn't think of what to use it for, where I could put it in it, because it's so big. And then inspiration struck. <laughs> and it's become my rescue remedy for on bad days when I'm feeling very overwhelmed and the pain gets the best of me. So I hope that's been useful. Obviously, yours will look slightly different. It changes all the time. I swap books out, I swap workbooks out, activities out. Sometimes I put craft kits in there too that I know that they'll be able to work on by themselves independently and sometimes little games as well, like little um, money snap or teletime snap, um, traveling through history snap, them types of activities. Some of the brain box ones will go in there as well because they can pretty much play them independently too. So that is actually one of my main recommendations, really. Set yourself up with something like that, that the children can help themselves do independently, still be learning, still be developing, and you can rest at the same time and get in what you need and listen to your body and meet your body's needs. So I hope this has been helpful. If anybody has any further questions, please do get in touch, put them in the comments below, and I will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe or follow on TikTok.